Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess. Today we are playing the E4 as per usual. I've got my cup of tea, feeling especially British right here. I've got my, uh, it says after tea, it's pig in bedtime. A gift from my girlfriend. Thanks, Jess. Um, we're going to play a Mengarini Sicilian here. Move A3 in response to C5. Really venomous uh, move A3, especially in lines with Knight C6, where we can play B4 straight away. Um, for deferring the pawn off to the side, giving up a full pawn, um, from the A-file as it wanders over here to be taken uh, by the knight most likely to then play C3 and D4 claiming the full center with super uh, open development ideas for the bishops as well as an open A-file uh, that will most likely prove to be very useful in a second so we can take here this is the best move D5 but after queen takes we have a really nice bit of prep uh, that long-term viewers of the channel will be aware of and I'm just gonna sip my tea while I play knight a3 bars. Okay, the point of that, <laughs> the point of that is basically, we're going to b5, and there's nothing you can do to stop me going to b5. If you think, okay, knight a3, I'm going to b5, you know, your opponent might think, okay, a6, let's let's stop knight b5. It doesn't stop knight b5 at all because of our open a file. Um, the pawn on a6 would be pinned to the rook here. I've covered this line, uh, maybe in a couple videos actually, I get it quite often it's one of the most venomous moves um, against the Sicilian. So they go for e5. Now we're going to go knight b5. The obvious point of knight b5 being look at c7. We are hitting the queen, the knight, uh, sorry, the king, and also the rook from c7. And there's a really nice move here, actually. Bishop d6 is a good resource to defend this square. But I think here we can play the move bishop c4. And if the queen takes the bishop, which seems to be hanging, we then take the bishop on d6, hit the king and hit the queen, and win the queen, obviously. So I'm going to play bishop c4. There is also the move queen g2. Um, but then I think I take here with check. Okay, so they give me a check. Do I play queen e2 or knight e2? Or king f1? I don't think it's king f1, but it might be. We hold on to g2. Might not be, not, might not be stupid. Uh, our opponent's almost certainly going to drop the bishop back to b8, uh, just to hold on to the c7 square uh, and try and minimize the effect of this knight. In that case, I think I'm going to go knight to e2. The point being that if you go bishop b8 here, uh, which you kind of have to, I think, because like say you go and try and take here, um, I can just take the bishop with check and then play rook g1, for instance. So they go back to b8. Now we can castle kingside. And yes, you're a pawn up but your queen's in the center, and so is your king. And rook one's gonna come very quickly, and some, some discovery with the knight's gonna come very quickly, and we're gonna try and exploit that. We've got a lovely developed bishop, super active knight that's not removable um, from the b5 square just yet because of this really active rook. So we have the best rook on the board, best bishop on the board probably, um, by far the safer king, and probably a little more development. We've got both of the knights out, our opponent's still got this, Knight on g8, preventing them from castling immediately. Um, and if they go knight f6, then who knows, uh, we might be able to tear stuff up with rook e1. So I'm not exactly sure what the computer will think of this position. I'd imagine they would say it's roughly, roughly equal, but cheers. I've actually got a ginger biscuit here, guys. This is a, this is a brand new, brand new Will Taylor chess element, which is eating tea and biscuits while playing chess. They take on d4. That cannot be a good move. I've just pointed out that the queen is on the e-file and the king is also on the e-file. So why would you open the e-file? Surely I just play rook e1 here. I don't want to waste time taking this back. Rook to e1 and there is going to be a discovery. The queen is here, the king is here. My knight will move so the knight comes away to block but... I'm just not convinced by this. Surely this makes no sense. Maybe it does. Maybe I should have played queen b3 and gone after, uh, gone after the pawn on f7. Okay, we can definitely take this back and the queen has to move. And that seems like at least a small success. We could also take this knight and the pawn would have to take because this knight's pinned. Right, guys, we're definitely taking back with knight. We're only one pawn down. We have both our rooks are better than our opponent's rooks. Both our knights are better than our opponent's knights. Our light square bishop is far better than our opponent's light square bishop. Our king is safer. You know, on all of these factors by which you analyze a chess position, 
We are, we're just better. Except for material. Ooh. Let me not get checkmated, though. Hold up. Wait a minute. I mean, I can just play g3. Yes, long term, there's light square weaknesses, but I could probably play bishop f1 as well and defend those. I'm going to play g3. We're going to keep messing this queen about. It has to move yet again. And I might then take here. And there's, there's even an idea to sacrifice a rook just to draw the king out to e7 and not let them castle. Okay, so queen f6. Fine. That makes sense, probably. Now what do I do? Well, I really like the idea of bishop a3 at some point. Maybe even now. Bishop a3 threatening takes this knight. Pawn takes, and then I like take here with check. Just removing the defender, exploiting this pin. Bishop a3 looks really pleasant. If I take this knight now, pawn takes. Okay, but bishop a3, what if you what if you castle kingside? Then I can take, and if you take with knight, you lose a rook. I do really like bishop a3, because I mean, our other three minor pieces are developed. You know, which piece needs improving? The bishop is still on c1. Where can it go? This beautiful diagonal here. Surely that's the right option. I think it is. Bishop a3, we're going to go for it. Completing the development of the pieces, our bishop pair is devilish. Our bishop pair is, uh, is sniping towards the king. And the king's still in the center, and we're going to punish this, because our opponent's pieces, they just aren't that active. Yes, long term, uh, playing g3 isn't ideal in front of your king, especially when your opponent's still got a light square bishop. However, I'm not sure they have time to try and exploit that. Their rooks are abysmal. I don't think they can castle yet, because knight takes. And if knight takes, we win a rook. And if castles, knight takes, pawn takes, then I play bishop takes here, hit the rook, and hit the queen. And yeah, you can take my knight, but I'm just going to win your queen. So I think I think we're doing really, really well here. Yet again, the Mengarini Sicilian providing a beautiful position. I'm still working on the tutorial for this. Um, I want to make it a really in-depth and good quality video because I've got a lot of, a lot of passion behind uh, 2A3 against the Sicilian. Um, so I want, to, I want to put out something that I'm proud of. So for those of you who are waiting on that, there's some of you commenting, I know, uh, waiting on that video. Uh, it is coming. Be patient. Sorry that I'm uh, making you wait for the greatest thing you'll ever see. However, in the meanwhile, get a cup of tea. And just enjoy a cup of tea, do you know what I mean? It's what, like, what, what is a better evening than chess and a cup of tea? Our opponent is, uh, is digging well into their time now. They are a full minute down on the clock and, uh, and counting. And I think, ooh, 9 to e5, wow. Wow. Okay, right. Now, IT5 is really interesting because now we can't go for this whole takes idea. I'm kind of... They do attack the bishop as well. This move might just make a lot of sense, but I'm also considering, what if I just play f4? And I say, okay, have my bishop. I'm taking here with check. I feel like this just makes sense. I think f4 might just be a great move. If I take this now, then queen takes, and f4, that probably also works. I don't know which is better. I kind of like just playing f4 now, just leaving the pieces on the board, leaving this bishop here. Because I feel like in more eventualities, this bishop could be useful along the diagonal, rather than trading it off. But bishop here, if king or queen recaptures, then we get to just play f4. I think, you know what, I am going to go f4 straight away. I really like this. I want to keep my bishop here. I don't know which would have been more accurate, but honestly, I'm not willing to put too much time in to work it out, because I feel like both are going to be winning. We'll have a look in the analysis, but whether taking here or playing f4 first was correct, but I feel like one of them would be the best approach here. Um, they take my bishop? I mean, I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it if you insist. Check. Now, what are you going to do? Play queen takes? Bishop takes and king takes? I really doubt that's a good idea. Especially because we have the move queen e2 then. Oh yeah, okay, look, we take here. And if the king takes, we go queen e2. Hit the knight and hit the king. Although you can play bishop here, block him. But we go. Oh, guys, guys, guys. Yeah, queen e2. 
hit the knight, hit the king, and if you go bishop e6, defending the knight, uh, and blocking the check, we can play f5, attacking the bishop, while it's pinned to the king, the king never got out the center, and that red haze around it is just proving my point. Um, we were able to deliver checks, and use these dynamic tactics to now win a bishop, I believe. And I mean, the knight will, sure, will surely follow. Or I just take this, actually. What am I talking about? Why wouldn't I just take this? Just remove the defender. I could play this, but I could also just take. Takes, and if you recapture, we win the knight. And I'm just clearly winning. Takes, and if you don't recapture, there's a discovery. Yeah, we're just going to take it, guys. No need for f5. No need to get fancy. We can pick up the knight here now. And uh, while my opponent does have a rook, a bishop, and extra pawn for the queen, uh, they do not have the knight compensation and also i mean the pizza, look at look how unactive their pieces are their king is their most active piece let me tell you something you don't need to be that good at chess to realize that if your king is your most active piece you're probably not having a great time i don't even know if it's possible to defend rookie one and me just taking on e6 uh, i wouldn't even be surprised if we saw resignation here the king is the most active piece i mean that okay cheers Okay, they go king here. I, mean, I think rookie one just makes a lot of sense because they have to play the rook here. And then I could even drop back or I could just fork like this. To which you have to take because I'm just forking the rooks. I could even play this now. Honestly, we're going to go for this now. Idea being that we are attacking this, um, which is, I believe, a checkmate threat after check king here. And then that would be mate. Uh, so you have to take because we're also attacking the rook. Now we're getting in with the queen, and it's just not looking good. I can start eating pawns if I want. I feel like I should just go after the king, though. Let's play rook e1. Just put pressure on the uh, on the weaker pawn here. And this king, this king is, uh, it cannot, cannot come back. I could maybe just do this and take the pawn. That seems to be a decent idea. I feel like also just, let me just take this pawn. I mean, why not? We'll start gobbling pawns. My opponent is going to try and run as fast as they can. Uh, but I will be able to catch them. They are not the gingerbread man. So if we take here, this is, I think, a nice tactic to end the game. Because after rook takes, we get to take this rook. It's a like, deflection tactic. And there's no check because rook e1, king f2, there's no more checks. Okay, there we go. Nice little check. Awesome tactic to end the game. Drawing the rook away from the defense of the other rook. We probably see resignation in 3, 2, 1... Okay, you can't win them all. Um, yeah, I think there's just nothing to worry about. There we go. Resignation. And yeah, let's have a look at the analysis. Okay, so here we are in the analysis. If we scroll down here, we see that my opponent played with 87% accuracy and didn't even make any blunders, but we just played so accurately. 96%. One mistake, but it was uh, it was from plus 5 to plus 3.2. Not, uh, not too deep. It was bishop a3. I wonder what I should play. Let's go through the game anyway. Basically a perfect game is what I'm saying, um, apart from a slight inaccuracy and conversion in the middle game there. E4, C5, A3, the Mengarini Sicilian. Um, if we have a look at the database here, I have played this 221 times, and I've had reasonable success, 49-47. Um, it's not bad. It's not bad. You know, you can't win them all. Um, you can win pretty much exactly half of them. However, after knight C6, you see that my win rate jumps up. Uh, once the database loads here to 53%, um, and then I've got a few draws in here, but I'm only losing 41% of these games because after B4, if they accept my full gambit here, you see that the win rate steadily climbs because 59%, I'm only losing 38% of these games now because uh, after C3, even though black is objectively slightly better here, or I guess it's objectively drawn, um, after the knight goes back and we play D4, um, the position is just beautiful. And this little sigma here, denoting the total games. I've played 74 games in this line. Wow. Um, and won 59%. Not too bad. So, especially after D5, the win rate steadily climbs. This is the most venomous line. 64% uh, and 33%. Now, I'm just going to keep this open so we can have a look. Takes. Queen takes. And I've played knight A3 every single time. Um, and yeah, as you can see here, awesome stuff. Apparently, queen A5, I've lost two once. That is the best move. It's a very hard move to play, though. Because uh, after bishop d2, you're walking into like two potential discoveries. And it's like, I mean, how do you even come up with queen a5 unless you know the position? So, our opponent pushes the pawn. Knight to b5 here. And uh, instead of going king d8, which is actually by far the best move, everything else concedes advantage because after bishop d6, um, we'll close the database now. I've played bishop c4 every time. 
a really standard idea if queen takes a not standard idea actually quite outrageous idea but standard in this opening uh, we can take this king moves and then we can take the queen and we are just going to be basically up a queen for a pawn which is uh, a reasonable advantage so after the check here the only move to even stay slightly in the game uh, if you take here we can just take and then if the king comes up we can take this with check and then go queen f3 and protect our rook and just win the game up a piece uh, so they go for this queen e4 check knight e2 here uh, best move awesome i'm glad i remembered that because i haven't played that in the past um, in every game then bishop b8 as i said king side castles and this is a mistake this has just had to be a mistake this uh this astounded me while i was eating my ginger biscuit what like opening the e-file when your king and queen are on the e-file and my rook is about to be on the e-file horrible idea um, and now you see rookie one and knight takes d4 are basically the same uh, evaluation we went for rookie one and after the knight comes here, we can pick up the pawn. Uh, the queen has to move. G3 is the best move, preventing any shenanigans on H2 here. Uh, G3, queen steps back, and oh, here was my mistake. Now the engine still really likes it, and plus like fuck. Okay, wait a second, what? I don't know why I'm getting a mistake when this is actually not plus 3.2, but it's plus 5.4. Okay, you know what? Who cares? Um, I don't think this is a mistake. This is actually, oh, apparently I could have been plus 7.3 if I'd taken this pawn takes and then bishop a3 you're joking okay so i had the right idea just slightly the wrong order according to the engine but we're still completely winning uh, after the knight comes in here f4 i was right was the correct way to go uh, if we gone here then after queen takes an f4 they could have gone for for instance just castles and after i take i mean they at least maybe get to win this pawn back uh, whereas if we go f4 straight away um yeah the knight takes we go check queen takes bishop takes king takes and then queen e2 awesome stuff and after bishop here i did have f5 i mean i knew i had f5 i just thought it was cleaner to take the bishop but i guess the problem is f5 and i'm just going to take the bishop like for free because if i go f5 and you try and save the knight i mean where you're going here then i can just take and you can never take back because i'm going to take here with queen okay that makes sense um instead i just chose to take like this it's a bit simpler get the bishop off the board quickly and then uh a really nice really nice move knight here forcing the bishop to take and now we've just got a queen against a rook basically f5 check would have been interesting opening up the king so then go check what if the king comes back queen d7 and apparently there's some forced mate oh my god we just zigzag in force the king back take here king up and then just slide over okay outrageous stuff uh instead i decided to go for the simpler conversion rookie one and then uh here and after the pawns pushed rook takes uh, e6 nice little finishing tactic if you don't take the rook i'm just gonna i mean oh that is actually checkmate in this position but um there's gonna be an exchange of rooks or mate to follow um and if you do take the rook i can take here on a8 and yeah it's just a queen versus a rook i mean there's there's, there's nothing more i left in the position after the rookie one check keep an eye on the checks we have king f2 no more checks here and we're going to easily win the game so basically a perfect game thank you very very much for watching i hope you enjoyed uh if you are new to the channel like subscribe comment um and if you're you know if you've been here before you know what to do um hopefully you guys are appreciating the new the new audio quality i hope it sounds good um i'm getting used to this setup very slowly um and trying to work out how to start streaming so i'm putting quite a lot of my time into that rather than cranking out loads of videos so thanks for your patience um there hasn't been too much content over the past couple of weeks um but there will be soon and you guys can tune into the streams and we can drink some tea cheers have some fun play some good chess learn some good chess and probably make some blunders because let's be honest if i'm streaming you're not just going to see these 96 percent accurate games you're going to see the intense rage after i blunder my queen on move four thanks for watching goodbye